Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Kativ Autodesk Virtual Academy. I'm Nigel Lombayek, application engineer and your host for today. Um, and joined with me today is Mike Carlson, our uh, project manager here. From hey, everybody. Uh, so uh, just real quick, today we're going to be going over uh, Vault security and some roles in, uh, in Autodesk Vault. A lot of these functionalities are in Vault Pro uh, and Vault Workgroup, but uh, there are a lot that roll over to Vault Basic as well. Mike, you're going to go over um, where that line is from sure. basic to pro. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reason we're doing this vault security webcast is, you know, there are a lot of people who are a little overwhelmed with the op uh, the options you have in vault. There are what, like 20 plus, almost 30 different roles you can have um, and multiple ways to secure and, things. Yep, yep. And multiple different conditions, yeah. Exactly. Certainly. And so we're just gonna go ahead and clarify some of those for you and your team. Um, just so, you know, you're making sure that the right people have the right access at the right time to those files. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll pass it on to Mike. Excellent. Thanks, Nigel. And uh, it's kind of a it's unique. I haven't been on one of these AVAs, and I don't even know how long. How long yeah. has it been, Nigel? Uh, it's probably over a year, so Mike. So it's been a while. <laughs> so uh, hey, everybody out there, I see a lot of familiar names on the on the webinar here already. Um, so uh, I'm not going to PowerPoint you to death here. Just a few slides, just to kind of help clarify things and um, understand, you know. I guess you could say some terms and whatnot of what I'm, what's going on here. So really my goal for this web webinar really is just to review what's going on with security, right? I mean, this is a big part. Those of you that have Vault Pro, Vault Work Group know, you know, the security is really typically what drives everybody into it. So, um, you know, being able to control the files so people can get access at the right times when they need it. Um, so, you know, so the goal of this, I just want to review, go through these security options. You know, obviously we're not going to get, you know, in, in the short time we have here, get into extreme details on things, but at least kind of uncover the mystery of it a little bit. Um, and so you guys can kind of tackle this on your own a little bit. Um, you know, of course, Autodesk keeps adding to this too, right? People <laughs> want more and more security. So, you know, every release, especially the last, you know, three, I'd say have just been crazy about securities. So, um, you know, kind of clarify, show a few things that are in the in the new uh, in the new vault as well. Um, so that's kind of where we'll go from there. I don't need to really talk much more about the, this slide. You could read it yourself. Um, so here we're really going to talk about security roles and rules. So, um, you know, let me differentiate here. When I say a role, and this is a big part of you know anybody that has Vault Basic, this is where really it's going to differentiate. So when I talk about roles you have a role to access Vault. So it's like the little comic there, whether you read the text or not, this this guy in the comic, not you know the guy with the uh, yellow hair, I guess you can say, he got into the building. So he had a role that allows him access into the building. But now once he's in the building, his role just says, hey, you can get into the building. That's a general overall role. His role says, hey, you can open doors. That's a general overall role. And with Vault Basic, that's what you give to everybody, right? You know, so Vault Basic, you assign a role that says, hey, yes, you can check in and check out files. But what you can't do is um, control beyond that, in a sense, um, right? So you, you see here, this guy's looking at the door and says, oh, my role says that I can open up this door. And he gave it a try. And sure enough, he's able to open it. And again, thinking back to Vault Basic, that's a general role that gives them that. Now, when we start to talk about the upper level of products, the Vault, the Vault Work Group and the Vault Professional and the Vault Office even kind of added into this, that's when we start to be able to define those additional rules, additional pieces, right? To say, hey, look, you can't do some of these other things. So if you look on here, um, a couple of things just to note, these general roles, right, from my, from my things, being able just to log in, right? Being able to read, write, move, delete, rename, copy. We'll, we'll kind of look at these roles in a little bit in the demonstration, but these are the general things that typically everybody needs to do in a vault. Then we refine security from that. Um, so, you know, what we're doing is then going and defining rules to events, to triggers that happen, to uh, to just states that things may may exist in life size states state life cycle states transitions etc. That's where we're starting to get granular and define down further into things. 
Um, you know, we can also do folder controls. Um, so we can actually uh, not only put life cycles on folders and use life cycle securities there, but we can actually just go to a folder and apply, apply security to it, just like you would um, in a Windows environment now. Um, and, you know, so funny thing is, believe it or not, is I can even get granular down to a single file level. Now, while I don't recommend this, because you can imagine the kind of backtracking on this that would have to happen to figure out, oh shoot, what was that file? Where did I do it? But you can actually go to a file and override any security that exists on it to say, look, Mike or an administrator or Nigel or Joe, you have access to this file, who, regardless of what conditions it may be in. So uh, again, something we'll look at in the demonstration here so you guys get a better feel for it at that point. Uh, so I think uh, I think that at this we'll jump into live demonstration. Uh, just another little com you know, you see that little comic in the in, in the corner right there, right? That's what I was trying to describe. Is look, uh, hey, this entire building's locked up, but I have this little granular role that allows me that allows me as a cat to go through the little cat door down there, right? So um, that's just kind of a description of what's going on. So let's jump over to uh, Vault here. And I am in uh, Vault uh, 2018, as you can see from the screen here. So I first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about just the roles. So uh, I'm gonna go into administration. I'm logged in as an administrator here. And uh, let's just talk about kind of first off is in the, in the login screen here, right? You have both users and groups. I, I you know, try to preach as much as possible to use groups and, you know, unless you're just a really small, like one or two Z type, you know, group, you, you probably don't need groups, but uh, it's just easiest to apply roles to groups and then just switch out users as you need it from that point. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the roles. So so again, this is what we're talking about, the general role. So, so at first I've got to have this general role to get in even into the vault. What can I do as a whole inside of my vaulted environment? Um, and, you know, me having Vault Pro here, you'll see there's obviously a whole list i've never counted them but you obviously they'll see the whole list here uh of of what these what what the roles are so um i'm going to skip past a few of these like content center custom objects um i really don't know a whole lot of people using custom objects um but i think once you once we start talking about some of these other things you'll get the idea of what editor versus manager does so um you know the first is if i look at any doc consumer doc editor doc uh, editor too. These roles exist both in Vault Pro and in Vault Basic. And if we look at any one, Vault Consumer example is the easy one. This is just read only. This is the guy that all he can do is go into the vault and read based on his global role. So now, you know, the, the funny thing is here is, okay, well, what if I gave him permission then to edit on a particular file or not? Well, actually the global role takes precedence over that. So um, it, because the global role has no ability to check in, check out, modify, he would actually be restricted at that point. So understand that, again, it's that high level global point. So if we look at the, the doc editors. Now, the, the thing to notice here is you'll see we got editors here and managers here. Um, we got editors here and managers here. So understand the editors are the people that are basically, think of that as the role for being able to change and modify data. Do your daily check-in, check-out. Think of those daily activities inside the vault that you need to do. That's what's gonna be in the vault editor here. Um, so you'll see really we have a level one and level two. Um, you'll notice that the list doesn't change ex too much when I switch to level two. It gets a little bit longer and understand what the functions, basically what it's adding at a level two. So if you're getting more ability, to, you, you, more capabilities with level two is you can actually rename files with level two. You can move files around. You can rename folders. You can move folders around. Those are the type. Those are just the main ones. I think that you can think of an app as an everyday function that you get with level two that you don't get with level one. Um, so you know, if, those of you out there, if you if you assign somebody a level one, they are not going to be able to rename a file. They are not going to be able to move a file. Um, they can create files, they can check them in and then check them out, uh, re all those things. But again, that rename and move is restricted to the level two point. 
Now, when we get to the doc managers, we think of those, and this is not, by, by default, this is not in Vault Basic, um, but this manager role is what's giving the, the, the user the capability to make changes to things like the life cycle. Those workflows that are in place for changing life cycles and transitions and everything like that, this is what doc manager is giving you the capability. So again, if you don't have this role of doc manager, in no way are you going to be able to assign or excuse me, change a lifecycle state on any file um, or, or whatever you have, item, whatever it may be inside the vault. And for those people who don't know what life cycles are, Mike, if you want to just give like one or two sentence explanation of that for people who might be using Vault Basic or not Vault at all. Yeah, you know, think, life cycles are just, uh, think of them, you know, in your product design, right? You're going through um, a life cycles potentially at a product level. It could even be at a file level. So the idea here is, is my file available for working? Is it work in progress? Is it a WIP file? Can I work on it? Can I make changes to it? Has, it, has this file now been released? So formally, if it's released, I probably want to lock this thing down so I'm not making changes to it. So, so it's really more or less a, ta a way to tag your data. Um, and then again, to what we talked about, apply security to it based upon that condition. Um, so the other items here you'll see are item editors. So you have the ability. So, you know, depending on whether you're using doc control and again, still, this is a vault pro specific functionality is an item master. So think of your bill of materials, your item masters that exist inside your ERP system. Well, oftentimes we'll go to control the data at an item level rather than a file level. Um, because again, just it varies on the company. This is really kind of a company specific thing and in, in how you look at your company. But you can think of yourselves as, look, if you're concerned with bills and materials and I've got to order this part number one, two, three, four, five, you're probably more item centric versus a document centric flow. So again, just these, these overall roles, you'll see a couple of them that are added with 20, 2018 are these project administrator and security administrator. There used to be prior to 2018, only this administrator role. So basically your IT guys, your CAD administrator, um, your security guy, which tended to be your IT guy, but could be the CAD administrator. Um, before, those guys all had to have administrator role. So an IT guy could have technically gone in and deleted anything out of the vault that he wanted. So what happens is we broke, they broke it out a little bit to say, hey, this is more the CAD guy. This is more the guy that knows the workflows around CAD, the CAD administrator, the vault administrator, and what's going on there. So let's give him the permissions he needs to do, like delete files unconditionally, um, do things change, you know, work with the change orders, uh, those type of things versus the security guy that's more concerned with the security, the ACLs, the, you know, what can the user read, what can the user write, et cetera. And then of course they still have the global administrator that's literally everything that you can possibly tag on here. So. Yep, and I know this question comes up in support a lot, Mike. Um, if you apply two roles to someone that have like conflicting securities, what happens? There's not a role per se that will have a conflicting security. Uh, now, security is different. You could have conflicts down there. But as an example, if I give somebody both doc editor one and doc editor two, um, it's going to go to the highest level, which would be a doc editor two. Right. Because I've seen some people that have um, that have admin, and then they have like every other role. Right. Um, you in that case, you just want to have admin. Having all of those other ones aren't going to change anything. For you. Correct. The, the I, I will say that there is one exception, and it's not really a subject today. But um, change orders, you do need to have change specific change order rules if you're involved in the workflow in the mm -hmm. change order. So that would be the one exception to the rule here. Um, but uh, that's it. All right, so let's talk down a little bit deeper. So, so again, we talked roles, right? This is just the global role. Again, think more vault basic. I have this role to be able to check in and check out files. I can do it throughout the entire vault. I don't have the ability to refine, to get more granular into the security, which, which is fine for a lot of companies. Um, you know, where, where oftentimes you struggle there is when you want to expand the vault. What happens when somebody in manufacturing is asking for a, a expansion into the vault or they want to see the data or, you know, somebody on the shop floor, you know, the supervisor on the shop floor wants to get prints for his guys or, uh, 
quality wants to get prints to check uh, to check against. Um, at a vault basic level, you just don't want to allow those guys in to just go freely throughout the vault and give them some sort of editor type function. So the idea now is with the work group and the and the uh, the pro is to be able to refine the securities to be able to allow more people out in here and be confident that you know they're not going to mess something up or get something wrong or get the wrong print, what whatever it may be, right? That they're restricted to the to the correct locations. So I'm going to close out of this uh, dialog box here and go over to uh, the other administration in vault settings. So under the behaviors tab here, um, you know, really when we talk about the kind of the first line of security, it's really driven at this life cycle point right here, right? So this is where I'm defining my data. If I went in and looked um, here, we'll just quickly jump over here to item master, right? And I look at these items and I look at these part numbers that I have listed. They have a clear state and condition that these things exist in. And you'll notice, okay, work in progress, awesome. It's unlocked, it's available for editing. I can make changes to it. Released, locked up, sorry, no, nobody's making changes to this until something happens, right? And in my case, in this case, I said, until I make this change to go to um, work in progress, then it'll flip the condition and be able to do the unlock. And I, me as a user can go in and make changes to it. So, um, you know, again, that's the state-driven information or the life cycle. So anytime you see state, think of life cycle state. When you see change state here, think of change life cycle state. Jump back into administration here, behaviors. And so we go to the life cycles. So here you'll see a number of life cycle states that I have defined. Um, they do different things. There's some that are just kind of, you know, real basic. There's some that are a little more complex because I've got to be able to pre-release data for, you know, something that may be a long lead item. I got item release information. So I'm just going to go ahead and just focus on this item released one here. And when you look at this, the next part, the next level of security is now, like I said, applying security at a lifecycle standpoint. So I'm going to go edit here just so we can pull up the window a little bit bigger and you guys can see this. And I can look at any of these states. So for instance, I'll look at work in progress and notice I have a security tab right here. So what the security now says is for me is like, if this thing's in work in progress and, and, and whether we're talking items here or, or uh, files or folders, it's all uh, life cycles are the same. So, so, so you'll, you'll notice that there's not, there's, how you apply the life cycles and do the life cycles are exactly the same. And then you can kind of come in here and tell it what it applies to. Does it apply to folders? Does it apply, apply to files? Again, this one I'm only applying specific to items. That's why you see all the item information checked. Um, so when I look at work in progress here, you'll see at this point I said, hey, I want everyone just as a global group. This is everybody that's in the vault that has the role. They can read, they can basically read, modify and delete. Delete conditionally. So, uh, you know, just be careful on that one. Delete conditionally meaning that if this was a part that I just put in and it doesn't have any other relationships to anything else, it's not put in an assembly, doesn't have a drawing, whatever it may be, and I tell it to delete, I'm allowed to delete it. As soon as it becomes linked to an, something else, it's now considered an unconditional uh, delete that like your vault administrator would have to do or somebody that has admin privileges. So we look at this and we say read, modify, and delete, allow, I'm explicitly allowing across the board. It's wide open. I could technically come in here and say, really, there's no state bias security. It's, it's the same kind of definition. It, it doesn't really matter on this. Uh, this check marks us a little bit easier. Um, I can also look at review. And in this case, I've said, you know what? Review allow everyone to read, modify, and delete. Maybe that's not the case for your, maybe when it's in review, you don't want anybody to modify this thing. You only want people to delete it. Well, what do you want to do here? And this is something to be careful with. You notice on modify, we have the option here to allow, deny, or blank. So what happens here is this is just an explicit thing. So if I come in here and say on delete to deny, I'm explicitly, so this is a hard forced, you know, force it down your throat, explicit. This, nobody can ever delete anything when it's in this review state. 
There is just no way of getting around this. However, in a blank condition, so in a modified condition, if I leave this blank, what it says, nobody in the everyone, so this is a little tricky, because right now it's saying in the everyone group, they're allowed to read, they're not allowed to delete, but modify is blank. So technically this everyone group right now is not allowed, is, is actually more not allowed to modify. They will be locked out of this modified condition. But because I'm leaving it blank here, it gives me the ability to say, yeah, but you know what? I want um, the capability of uh, the administrators group here to possibly come in and modify this. So what I've done now is I've said, and I don't know why that deny didn't stick, but what oh, I've done- The populated above, Mike. Oh, I missed it. Okay, I yeah. flipped it, sorry. <laughs> so I'll leave this blank because it doesn't matter. So uh, here everyone's denied. So administrators are now allowed to modify. I can allow them to read. By blanking here, it doesn't matter. They're explicitly denied from this everyone group. So they're never going to be able to delete just from this explicit that exists right here. And this is what I say, be careful with these explicits on your security as you go deep down in security. This is, Nigel, right, a lot of common questions in support is like, mm -hmm. why can't I modify this file? Oh, because you got some crazy security set that's denying you here, allowing you here, not denying you here. Right. It, it oftentimes can be a challenge to track backwards on. Um, so you just got to be careful. I recommend not to use explicit deny unless it's truly always every single time there's all no exception going to be an explicit there so give you that so that, that's that's how that would function there right this one would actually i want to leave this blank so by this by being blank at everyone says it gives me the possibility now to open it up for another person or a group is what happens there really windows does the same thing you know anybody that's kind of it related on the call uh windows does the same thing so uh, you know, you'll see here on release. I've explicitly said, I've explicitly said, allow to read. But again, I I didn't deny everybody here because I wanted that capability through mm -hmm. some other roles, through other some other security. Yeah. And this question just came in, Mike. Um, for editing lifecycle definitions, what role do you need to have in the vault to be able to do this? To edit the lifecycle definitions, uh, the role is doc manager two or admin. Or admin, correct, yep. Yeah, I guess the minimum role would be doc, doc manager too. All right, so uh, talk about a couple other things while we're here. Um, so I talked about the ability to add, you know, so this is specific to items, right? And I wanted to apply this specific to items. Well, one thing to understand is while I'm applying this to items and you'll see my item here in the background, right? That, that's got a lock on it and a part number and everything else. Well, these items also have files that can be associated, which you'll see in the background right down here. Well, I can I can enforce this these rules at my item release process out by, to the files by simply check marking this button down here. So you see here, I said, well, maybe this one, maybe I didn't want to do that, or maybe I do. I typically always want to enforce the same rules that are going on with the items down to the files. And I think in most configurations, I do that as well. But uh, understand that's what that button is doing. It's now taking these rules and applying it down to this particular file that's linked to this. The same would be for the folders here, right? So if this was um, if this was a folder lifecycle that I was configuring, you know, for um, a good example of this is you could have a project, let's say, you know, you want all that project data in one folder. And just as a quick reference point, you can put metadata and one of them being lifecycles onto that project folder. Now you can say, hey, this project's 60% done, 80% done. It's been submitted to the customer. And by doing that, you can also apply the security down to the file. So if this thing, if this project's been submitted to the customer, then maybe I want to, you know, pretend this says submitted, right? And I want to lock everybody out here. Well, I can apply that down to the files that exist underneath that folder as well. So just a, a slightly different workflow. Again, the life cycles are the same and the rules, this is how you apply the rules down to them. Um, it's just how you would use them at a folder or at an item or at a, at a, at a folder level. Right. And while, while we're on, you know, those items versus uh, 
versus file life cycles and stuff. Um, just want to iterate that it's pretty, I, I've seen it a couple of times where people have had some of these lifecycle definitions on items and they've also had them at the file or folder level. Um, at one point, those two are probably gonna conflict and you're gonna run into issues that way. I'm, I'm sure you've seen that before, Mike. Yeah. Um, you might see this where, say for example, you're, you're releasing something but the file's not locking. Um, it might be because the item is not released. Um, even though the file says it's released, it won't lock because the item is unlocked, things like that. So just make sure that you pick one or the other item-based life cycles or file-based. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Great point, Nigel. So let's talk a little bit about the next level. So, so again, this is security based upon life cycles. So when it's in this state, what happens? Well, now, of course, between these life cycles, I have transitions that exist between all these life cycles, right? So over here, I've got my transitions button. So you can look at this thing. So, okay, work in progress to in review. When I look at this transition, there's another level of security on here that says, who can make this transition? Me, I don't want to restrict this to anybody. It's like, look, if this is a work in progress and you're an engineer working on this and you want somebody to review it, I don't want to restrict this to, you know, it's got to be Mark that moves this thing. I want, I want anybody to be able to move it into review. So you'll see that that's why the restriction is kind of open here. But if I maybe go and look at uh, in review to released here, oops, transitions. Uh, in review to released. See, well, in my case, it's I still have it open in this case, but I want to override this. So now I want to say, you know what? I do want to have additional rules here that says that um, Mike Manager is the only guy that's allowed to make this this transition. So, so again, we'll come back to the I have the allow and the explicit deny here. <laughs> So just to understand, be, be careful when we're explicitly taking anybody out. Right now, by allowing Mike Manager, he is truly the only guy that can make this transition ever at this point, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's what that's what that's that's saying. This nobody else is allowed to make this transition. Once I turn kind of the no restrictions on. I have to define all my restrictions at this point, right? So whether it's my manager or whether it's the group of managers or whether it's the group of engineers, whatever, you know, however you go about defining it, right? Because um, you can define groups here as well. Um, uh, you're putting that, you know, you're applying those those rules in. So engineering, engineering and Mike manager are the only guys allowed to make this transition. So again, we can put these transitions all exist, right? So no matter how many work states you have here, you're gonna have these transitions that exist back and forth. Yep. We can cut off the transitions even by going, look, we should, and this one might even be in place, like no one should ever go from in review to quick change. The idea of quick change is if something's released and you just need to quickly change it without a revision bump. You go to that state, you open it, you make your, you know, you make your spelling correction <laughs> and then you exactly. put it back to release. So there really should be only the transition to quick change should only come between release. There should never be between review and work in progress. It's just not a necessary step. So you hear here, I'm denying everyone this transition. They everyone in the vault will not see a transition when they click, when they're in review and they click to change state, quick change is not even an option for them. It doesn't exist. So uh, that's that's transition. So again, it's, you know, you can follow this. It can be a little cumbersome. You can imagine the list, right? If you have, uh, let's go ahead and just cancel out of this. You know, you have a longer set of uh, items here. Obviously that list is a little bit longer. It takes a while to go through that stuff. There's no, Sorry, there's no easy button. There's no import or export check or checklist or anything like that to get there. You literally have to kind of go through all of those just to, just as a quick side note there. All right, so let's let's kind of back out of this. I'm going to come over here to the vault, and you know another level of security we've talked about is the folder capability, right? And and this is very similar to Windows to networks anything else. You go to any folder, and again, this is Vault Work Group and Vault Professional. You go to any folder here and click details, you're going to have the security button that exists. And in here, 
you can basically override and apply any security type groups that you want to exist. So all in the same fashions. It's not you know anything different. So here I just want to say that uh, maybe this is a special place that only um, Ron should be in. For now, I'm going to allow Ron in there. And again, this is the, the security here are the same. They're there. These ones are the allow, deny, and blank, right? So just be be careful, caution on your explicits and how they exist here. Um, and you can kind of you know do that however you want. You don't want to override anymore. I can I can turn that off and turn that on freely. The other thing that's really cool, and this is what support uses a lot, is when people have access permissions, is I can go to any folder or I could even go to a file level. And this is my effective access. So, so what it's allowing me to do is allowing me to plug in a user and say, what are his capabilities yep. in this folder right now or in this file? So this can be good kind of, again, for helping helping tra trace backwards on something. If a guy can't get in, can't modify, can't get into a folder or can't modify a file or anything like this, well, we can look on this and first off see, okay, well, he has an explicit deny, so let's start backtracking on explicit right. denies. Right, where, where does that exist? Yeah, and, and run run kind of the trail backwards on that. So again, this is just the, uh, the folder, and uh, again, very similar to Windows. You know, override whatever the object-based security is um, and add your users and groups to this. Don't forget also, I talked about it. Folders can have life cycles on them too, right? So we could control it. We can control it from two fashions. Um, you know, and now, you know, kind of to, to the last one here, and this is the one I said do not use, but uh, it's fair to let you know it's available, right? <laughs> is I can go all the way down to a file level and explicitly put on a security at file that says, um, you know, whatever it may be, engineering, nobody in engineering is, I'm going to deny them any read, read capability into this document. They will now never see this document. It won't exist. Right, but they'll see the folder that it lies in. They'll see the, they have permissions to the folder, but this document, the, this will only show these two documents. So, so you think about this, like in the beginning, I was talking about expanding Vault out to other organizations, this uh, other parts of the organization, right? I mean, maybe there's, you know, manufacturing has a folder, has a location for all their uh, DXF or step files that they're using in machining. Really, they probably designing doesn't need access to that or engineering doesn't need access to that. So, you know, just to make them feel special, you can say, yeah, we'll lock everybody out. It's only you guys that have access to this, mm -hmm. right? So, so you know nobody's going to go and modify your nests or modify your DXFs, yep. right? Or you, you know your full control of this. And, and, and oftentimes, you know, that, that, that kind of uh, uh, can help this expansion of Vault and, you know, kind of one source of the truth, right? And get everybody the, the information they need when they need it. Exactly. Um, just want to go over this real quick, Mike. Um, I know this question is going to come up. It's I've heard it maybe a dozen times in support, maybe more. <coughs> Excuse me. If you uh, apply security to a folder, um, does that security also propagate down to the files that are in there? So say, for example, if you want um, someone to be able to see the folder or not see the folder, right? Will those will that propagate to all the files underneath? Not not necessarily files. It'll probably get to the folders underneath, though. Makes sense, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, if you yeah, if you're telling it apply this rule to this folder and propagate it down to all the other folders, yes. Cool. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that that, that, that and so I let's go back to my PowerPoint here. I think that sums up the. Most of the live demonstration and what we want to talk about, um, you know, so we talk about all security begins. You, know, you, got, you got to start, you got to have a user and a group. Yep. Um, you now have to, the next level is you have to assign them a role. So based upon your user or based upon your group, which I recommend to use, right? What should these guys be able as a whole be able to do inside the vault? So we do, we apply those roles to those groups at that point. Now we start to do the granular point, right? We start to go into the life cycles. We start to go into the transitions. We start to go into the files, the folders, if necessary. Um, again, see my little files is red flagged there. Just, mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just be careful when we're talking about that. Um, and uh, 
you know, start to get that granular level of control. Again, typically it's to make people feel comfortable, right? Again, that, that idea of spreading it out in the organization. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, you, we can give you your own area. Matter of fact, you can have a folder right at the root. This is for nothing but uh, marketing. And you can go crazy in that. Mm -hmm. Maybe marketing is not the best example, but how about tech pubs? That's a good example. Guys, you know, technical publishing group. So um, it starts to, you know, again, you can see that those points to expand out from there. Mm -hmm. Just because we were on the subject of Vault, right? And uh, Autodesk has a Vault promo going on right now. Just uh, so you know, so it applies to any of the vertical products. You know, obviously, base, Vault Basic comes with the suites and the collections and everything else. Right. But uh, already, but uh, with this, you get it for Vault Pro, Work Group, or Office, and this does include Office as well. Uh, it's a forty percent discount when you buy five, five or more. It's so pretty significant. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> big, right? <laughs> um, so those of you that you know maybe may on been on the edge of expanding this to manufacturing to be able to put their nests and their you know step files and other things like that in there, or expanding to other parts of the organization. Um, you know, obviously, if you do that, you're going to need more licenses. This could be a this could be kind of a uh, from a license standpoint, an easy way in. Right. Yeah. Especially for people who are you know going to maybe use Vault Office, so the people can get their Excel files or uh, their Word docs and emails into the Vault. That maybe you've been hesitant on that before. Um, if there, I don't think there's a better time than now to be able to do that. Um, just going over it uh, at the bottom there. Vault Pro single user. That is. Single user is something that was available um, starting in 2017. If you didn't know, you can get a single user license now for Vault Pro and uh, Vault Work Group as well. Um, before the discount, 635. After the discount, it's 381. It's a total savings of in there in the green, $254 per seat. So uh, you can imagine, you know, if you get five or more, that starts to multiply pretty quickly. Uh, so it's something if you if you want to take advantage of it, it's it's definitely available to you. Um, and it does include network licenses. Every kind of license you can get for Vault, Workgroup, or Office, it includes. Um, just to clarify that for a couple of people who asked a couple of questions. So if you have any, uh, if you do want us to reach out to you, definitely let it be known in the uh, the survey, and we can kind of um, go over all of the details in regards to that. Yeah, and and I have one correction I want to make. I know somebody, Nigel, you said somebody asked about. Um, being able to create life cycles and create the definitions and whatnot, do you need an administrator role for that? So technically you do need an administrator role. I was thinking of being able to change definitions from one definition to another. Mm -hmm. That's doc manager too, but actually to actual make changes in the security and then the life cycles and everything else, that is an administrator. A full role. admin role. Yeah, yeah, yep. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, looks like we have about a dozen questions or so. Let's go ahead and, um, start uh, chipping away at these guys. So we've got a few. Um, um, the project admin role and the security admin role, um, when did those come out? We're in 2018. 2018, so just a couple months ago here, um, to answer that question, those did come out pretty recently. Um, as Mike mentioned, um, you don't want to necessarily give someone in IT the full power to get rid of engineering files. Um, probably not the intended person to do that. So uh, that's probably why they added that. And we got another question. Um, is there a way to save all of these security and role settings as a file or group of files for backup purposes? If you want to go over the backup process, Mike. Yeah, so um, the deep detail settings, and, and unfortunately, so there is there is the way to save out your configuration from Vault. You can do that from the server. However, it doesn't save out the, the deep user and group uh, security configurations that exist inside. So it's just, it would just bring across your life cycles and whatnot. Yes. It, it, you you have to go back and apply that. So um, there's not really an easy way to per se back that up. I mean, it's the the next step is a full back, a full vault backup. You right, know, the, a full vault that. backup will grab everything. But like say for example, you were like make, for some weird reason, um, some people do do this, is create a second vault for some reason. And you want all of those roles and everything to transfer over it's a little more difficult in that sense um but if you do have a need for something like that talk to us we can definitely get you the uh the best course of action versus for something like that um and kevin asks here a question is it possible to delete users out of vault no <laughs> no you can only disable the users it's a it's a it's a core database thing 
um, you know, of course we get to ask this question all the time. Mm -hmm. yep. It's a core database thing in SQL. It, any record that anybody puts in is, is always tagged with that initial user, whether they're enabled or disabled or don't exist, you know, they're, they were there 10 years ago and they're not there anymore. And because it's always tagged, if you were to delete that out, it would just blow up. So um, the, um, the, uh, the, the way to get around that is you can rename the users, right? So, right. so you could take a guy that left and rename it to a new guy that came in um, and, and, have that, and have that apply to them. Yeah, generally you just want to disable it and create a new user for whoever that new person is, um, just so there's no confusion between all of that stuff. So uh, another question here, do all levels of Vault allow back-end integration into enterprise applications? Um, for instance, having a document uploaded to the enterprise interface uh, appended to the Vault. Um, so do all levels of Vault? No, so um, it, they do not. Vault Basic does not. Um, vault Workgroup and Vault uh, Professional do to different levels. So Vault Basic doesn't really have access to uh, API information or anything like that. Um, the Vault Work Group does. It. There's a limited API. I, I hesitate on that. Vault Basic has a little bit of a limited API access stuff it can do. But um, you know, anything, anytime you want to do integration to be able to put files in and do things like, or take files out and roll them over to other locations, um, that would require Vault Work Group and or, or most likely Vault Pro. Again, it depends on what you're what you're trying to do. Uh, understand right vault pro has ecos and items where vault work group does not so right. there's some different kind of roles that can exist there yeah if you want to know more just let us know um you can email questions at Kativ and we can make sure that the right person gets um gets that email if you want to deep or dive a little bit further into that um as well all right this is from nick um what's the difference between purchasing a multi-user license um versus buying multiple single user licenses so inherently, a multi-user license, um, one multi-user license would go into a pool of licenses that multiple people can access. Um, the number of licenses you purchase determines the number of concurrent users you can have for those multi-user licenses, um, or as opposed to a single-user license is assigned to a person, uh, which means only that person can use that license. If, uh, if that's not clear, Nick, let me know. Um, I can go over that with you. Um, I know it's a little bit different for uh, for people who are used to only being able to use network licenses for Vault, um, the single user thing is a, is a new thing as of 2017. All right, I'll give everybody about 30 more seconds to, uh, to ask any last questions that you do have. Um, at this time, I'll just go ahead and mention next week's uh, AVA. It's gonna be with Jonathan Creek. Um, it's gonna be super awesome. We're gonna go over some more iLogic. It's probably one of the most requested topics is iLogic and automation in general. Um, I know you're on, John. Um, I don't know if you can unmute yourself. I'm going to talk a little bit about what you're going to go over next week. Yeah, I can, I can kind of briefly mention uh, what we're going to go over. So iLogic is, is generally, uh, it was intended as being uh, what's called a master model approach, which is great for configurators. Um, that's how we've always been setting those up. Pretty much everybody in the industry will put everything into an assembly do all the constraints, do all those things, but uh, there are customers uh, and they're becoming more prevalent. And some of you guys may even have some of these issues where you can't, you know, if I were to try to do that with, with all your designs, I might be creating, you know, thousands, maybe hundreds of these master models just to be able to do those configurations. So what we've developed and been using for some customers that worked out really well is more of a generative approach. So the conf you have the same dialogues, as you normally would, but you choose those options and basically it's going to pull those components into your assembly and build it from scratch, apply the constraints automatically, and you can spawn those as instances or you can modify the original. So it becomes a really dynamic way to build your assemblies. Um, and we don't do that all with the iLogic. We do some of the Inventor API, but it's all contained in one thing. So it's kind of cool. Definitely, yeah. So. Um... Definitely stay tuned next week, everybody, uh, at 10 a.m., same time, same place. With John, he'll be on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, going over some of those. Um, while John was explaining that, we got a couple more questions in here. Um, do we want to address this real quick, Mike? 
Yeah, Kevin, you talked about Vault Basic with a folder structure. You know what? The easiest way to do that uh, that I've done in the past and had people do is I create that template folder structure outside the vault, like put it on a network drive somewhere, put it on your own personal drive, just a blank folder structure, right? Whatever the details are in it, you want it. You can easily just grab that now off your like C drive, you know, just do a Windows Explorer, grab it, drag it and drop it into vault and it'll copy that folder structure in. Yep, that'll be the easiest way to do it. Um, and Joseph, is there, a, uh, is there a file or folder backup system from within the vault application? Um, no, there's not. No, it's your backup is a full backup. Yeah, <laughs> your, your server backup because because uh, understand there's databases and files involved in the back end of this. So it's not just a simple grab this folder and copy files for a backup. Yep, and just to make sure that everyone who's on here that may be the the vault administrator at your company, uh, the biggest thing that we see in regards to people backing up their vaults incorrectly is doing a backup to the server system. Um, Doing like a system backup um, is not the same thing as doing a vault backup. Um, just note that you can cause some issues in there. So make sure you're doing a backup from the ADMS console or using um, Task Scheduler to do that backup as well. Um, just having a necessarily a frozen version of the server at some point uh, is not the same. So just letting everyone know that. I'm sure we've seen, have we seen some the horror stories I could see in Mike's eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just roll my <laughs> eyes. That's, that's a whole other <laughs> Yeah, it definitely is. Proper backups for Vault. So uh, with that, I think uh, I think we're good for today. Um, if anyone has any more questions, definitely shoot us an email. We'll be able to address those, um, even if they're not related to Vault in general. Like I did mention, um, if you are interested in, you know, maybe moving from basic to workgroup or pro, um, there is a, uh, a promo in place. Definitely reach out to us or your sales representative if you are interested in something like that. And uh, we can look at uh, your exact situation and how that will work out. So uh, with that, uh, thank you for being here today, Mike. Uh, I guess, what, another year until your next one? Uh, no, I think I'm scheduled for another one. <laughs> Somewhat soon. <laughs> exactly. So um, with that, I'll leave you all. Uh, you all have a great Thursday. And uh, I guess have a great weekend uh, past tomorrow. So we'll see you soon. Stay safe, guys.